Throne and Liberty is an upcoming MMORPG developed by NCSoft and published by Amazon Game Studios here in the US. This game has been development for PC and PS5 on Unreal Engine 4 for over 10 years. So all of you Ashes of Creation players out there that have been waiting 7 years so far, well, you'll see what 10 years gets you soon enough in a modern MMORPG. But as most of you are here watching my channel for Ashes of Creation content, I figured I'd talk about the potential next best thing to help you pass the time before you're able to step foot into Alpha 2 and beyond. Throne and Liberty started development as a top-down sequel to Lineage 2 called Lineage Eternal, which eventually changed into a third-person MMORPG that they decided to turn into a whole new IP. And as far as we know now, it has no connection to the world of Lineage lineage at all, but I imagine you will still get some similar feel to those past games, and for those of you who have been following Ashes of Creation closely, will know that Lineage 2 was an MMORPG that creative director Steven Sharif put a lot of time into back in the day, and a lot of money, and has taken a lot of inspiration from when developing Ashes of Creation. Such as the Tower of Carfin, which we'll see in the next month, which is said to be inspired a bit from Kruma Tower, and the Tower of Insolence both, which are from Lineage 2. Although they are going to be very different games, Throne in Liberty could possibly be the best modern MMORPG that is coming out to get you a little bit more prepared for Ashes of Creation. But what does Throne in Liberty have to offer? Well, for starters, Throne in Liberty is said to have a completely open world with roughly 3,000 to 5,000 people per server. And within this open world, you will find many non-instance PvE dungeons to partake in. These dungeons will have multiple layers to them, which you can use traversal equipment such as a grappling hook to get around these areas you want explore more quickly. And these dungeons should really get you into the right mindset on how to handle those open world dungeons in Vera when Alpha 2 comes along for Ashes. If you're more into PvP, there will be objectives throughout the world that guilds can fight for control over, although what perks you get from controlling these are unknown at this time. There is also Siege Warfare, which has players attacking or defending castles, where players will be able to turn into what I'm calling Siege Creatures, which are these massive beasts that can destroy walls, transport other players, and infiltrate the castle, which could really add a fun dynamic to pvp and sieges overall when players are in fact the siege weapon it almost feels like a combination of ashes of creation's castle sieges and the monster coin system merged into one giant battle weather will also play into these sieges as well rain seems to be a big dynamic within the world of throne and liberty where the rain itself can flood passages and prevent access and within sieges there will be secret passages to the castle but when it's raining these passages won't be accessible because they'll be flooded this system seems to tie into other pvp objectives throughout the world as well, and it will be interesting to see if it's just rain or if there's snow or other weather dynamics in the world as well. The world is said to be massive, and although we don't know the exact size of it, we do know that like Ashes of Creation, it will feature minimal fast travel throughout, but it does allow for players to transform into creatures such as eagles and wolves to get to their locations faster. When it comes to character customization though, there only appears to be one race to choose from, which is humans, but in the game, players will be able to transform into various creatures, along with what appears to be some pretty extensive character customization to it with sliders and presets. There are a few concerning aspects to Throne and Liberty though. For one, it's developed on Unreal Engine 4, which was my biggest concern with Ashes. Unreal Engine 4 isn't really built for large multiplayer worlds. There tends to be lots of performance issues, but if the developers put a lot of time into rewriting the code and really customizing it to fit an MMO, it is possible as we saw with Alpha 1. And it's unknown if they decided to update to Unreal Engine 5 since it's come out. There's been nothing said on that, but it is possible. But the biggest concern that most of you probably already expect, if you know NCSoft at all, you know that they like their pay to win elements. And although not much has been commented on how exactly the monetization plans in the game will work, it is something that you might want to keep an eye out for if this bothers you. Combat is my other concern. There has been some debate on this throughout the Throne and Liberty community, and the developers haven't seemed to outright confirm it from anywhere that I can see, but the combat style seems to be a tab targeting combat. And from what it looks, it has you rooted when casting abilities, which really is a safe way to go about it, but it's also a pretty boring take on combat these days, making it not quite as engaging as players really hope for in a game these days. But if you can look past the potential pay to win aspects in bland combat, then Throne in Liberty may be a great option for you to mess around with until Ashes of Creation finally comes out. And you don't have to wait long for Throne in Liberty, as it is said to be launching within the first 
two quarters of 2023 and we're already almost through quarter one so unless there's a delay you can probably expect this game by june are you excited to try out throne and liberty drop a comment down below and if you're new to the channel be sure to click that subscribe button hit that thumbs up turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come